Good afternoon and welcome to Allen Border Field, the venue for this afternoon's second semi-final in the Catherine Raymond Shield. We've seen already the first semi-final decided between Western Suburbs and Sandgate Redcliffe and Western Suburbs coming away with a win. This afternoon's semi-final is being played between Valleys and the Gold Coast Cricket Clubs. Second place Gold Coast against third place Valleys in the uh, order of merit before they got to the semi-finals. Joining me in commentary this afternoon, Carol Weichel. Carol, interesting match we're about to see between these two teams. They've had a chance to assess the field situations after the first game. Yeah, that's right, Billy. They uh, they will have watched Grace Harris and uh, thank their lucky stars that they weren't playing against her. And uh, yep, they'll uh, they'll know what's happening. That's for sure. Although the pitch does change in the afternoon here, and has that breeze changed at all uh, from this no, morning? No, no, it's blowing a gale from the northeast, which it's done pretty well most of the day. Yep. So things the same, but. Cricket's a funny game, as they say, and the pitch might uh, have a few tales to tell yet. Well, Valleys have won the toss. They've elected to bat up first. So we're going to see Gold Coast start off bowling. Charlotte Voss to bowl the first over. She's bowling to Charlie Knott. Let's have one go outside the, the off stump. We have certainly saw a stack of runs scored in the first game today. 234 being scored in the first innings by West and then followed up with 205 by Sangat Redcliffe trying to chase down that massive score. So plenty of runs still in the wicket. The outfield is outstanding. I haven't had a chance to have a look at the Sangate innings. Whew. Not edges that one down through uh, the vacant second third slip area for a single. Wind gusting up through the effects mic. Just giving you an idea. It's running from left to right. Gang's all here now, Billy. I'm back. Kirsten, <laughs> good to have you back. How was your lunch? It was good, actually. I got caught talking to, to Holly and I missed the, the start time. Well, Apologies okay. about that. A bit tardy, but it was a lovely sandwich. I recommend the Queensland Cricketers Club catering <laughs> here at Allen Border Oval. Yes, I, did. I had a nice one too. Nice uh, egg and lettuce. It's not cricket. I couldn't find the scones though, Kirsten. You had me looking for scones. Oh, I think I they're a secret it. stash. It must be. Well, Holly made a brownie, so I managed to steal some brownie. So. Of, of course, as most cricketers do. <laughs> so I was I was listening to you guys this morning, and I was tempted to run down to Coles and get some scones. <laughs> made it sound good. Not as good as the Queensland cricket scones. Oh, they're fantastic. It's like the the old bull's pie. The old bull's pie was phenomenal oh, as well. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, we were athletes back in the day, but... <laughs> oh, I fantastic. I do remember that. I've always said that Queensland cricket catering was some of the best sports catering of any franchise in this nation. Everything tastes great when you're really, really hungry, hey? <laughs> oh, I was going to say, a beer would have tasted quite good too. A hot day, there's nothing better than finishing off with a... You're saying it was never done? Oh. <laughs> no, I always thought it was good to finish a game. Probably not every club game, but nothing better than a semi-final hot day out in the sun and having a 4X beer at the end of play just to sit down with your teammates and ponder over the day that was. Nice and refreshing. Usually didn't hit the sides. Lucy Burke facing it up to Charlotte Voss. It's it off of pads out through mid-wicket. Mid for a single. This will be a di bit of a different looking game, I think, just due to the personnel, wouldn't you reckon? Yeah, I think we've even seen it just to start with as well. Just, you know, we're, we're pretty much blown away by the start of the first innings of that first game. And uh, then again, if scores of 200 plus, you don't often see them in a T20 game. So I think it'll be a bit more subdued, but, but that doesn't mean it's, a, it's just a different game. Yeah. Not keeps that one down. Still plenty of talent on show amongst uh, both sides. Absolutely. They've all got, every, every game's got its own flavour. And they're all good when it's cricket. So Hopping, hopping across the uh, Gold Coast team in the field, Georgia Main, of course, wicket keeping. With, uh, played with the Brisbane Heat and the uh, Hobart side in the early part of WBBL. And of course, Delissa Kimmins with the Heat and former Australian, well, current Australian player as well. Yep. And Georgia Presswood, she's the one I'm keen to see bowl today. 
Here's some great bowlers in this side. The Heat had some, definitely had some talent. Charlie Knott, of course, coming into the side this season. That was um, that was great to watch. She was a Jodie Fields um, recipient, yeah, I think. Yeah, she was. I mean, she didn't get Jodie Fields. She got <laughs> 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 she got the what do you call it? The um, it, it's the um, the bursary. Yeah, isn't that's it? The, right. That that's the word I was Jaco. looking for. Yeah, yeah. Hands out, but no, it was good to see her, see her out there and playing the games. She got thrown in a couple of positions where um, I thought the the coach showed faith in her performance and obviously her selecting her for the team. So they could have easily manipulated the batting order and thrown um, DK up. I thought in some of those times where you know it got a bit tense, but obviously she's got some runs under her belt and the coach has faith and didn't get to see her bowl too much during the WBBL, but do get a couple of overs in there and then looks like she's a pretty solid all-round athlete. Hard to get a look in on that side as a bowler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they had a lot of bowling options. That's right. It's Eliza <coughs> Flynn bowling the second over. It's wide down the leg side. Pretty s standard field as we look across with a gully point, cover, cover point, mid-off, mid-on mid-wicket, a square leg, and just the one player out on the rope down at the fine leg. Ooh. Half chance. <clears throat> I'll come away with a single, but yeah, certainly as you said before, because we're not going to see the type of strike rate we saw in the first match with the big hitters of Grace Harris and Beth Mooney in the respective teams. That said though, they didn't slog around as much. It was, it was just calculated shot play making. Yeah, yeah, very different innings. Uh, I think Gracie got a few more loose balls, so she was able to, a few more there to, to tonk, and tonk she did. Uh, and uh, I thought the Western Suburbs bowled quite well, so a bit more measured by Mooney, but still a spectacular strike rate. Just a replay of that catch to show how close it was. And there's the first there you wicket go. falling down <laughs> with Burke out court. With the score on five, her score on two, first wicket falls for Valleys. One for five. So not too expensive, that uh, difficult chance before. Just through the bat without putting her feet towards the ball on that one. Pretty happy about that, Flynn. They're the ones that you hope get quickly taken yeah. and doesn't cost you too many runs. And in your head as a player, you're doing the maths and working out how many runs you've got to make up. Or That one was not costly at all. <laughs> That's right. And we see Michaela Hinkley come out for the Valleys Club. The one from the uh, Brisbane Heat squad. Yeah, the squad's so deep now, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A number of players, you can sign sign everyone yep. basically at this rate. So, <laughs> no. A, a lot of depth and it. it's really good that you can actually extend a contract list. Yeah. Get a few more people involved in the system, particularly going into a hub environment and a few more people getting exposed. Yeah, well, I think in the end it increases your depth because they're all getting extra training and extra specialist training yeah. in their batting, bowling and fieldings. It's got to be good for the system overall. Yeah, credit to uh, cricket. They're leading the way in sports, I reckon, in Australia for making pathways for a lot of people. Eliza Flynn to bowl her first ball to Hinkley. Gets behind it nicely. <coughs> Just to finish your point on on that first match we saw too, what was what was interesting when I reflect was that there weren't any big overs. So it wasn't as if there were overs where 20, 25 runs. So both, both teams just pretty well went along their 10 to 12 runs per over across the whole 20 overs. Yeah, I think there was only probably a, a handful of ones that were above that kind of... 20, 25 mark, but when you're flying at around 12 runs and over fairly consistently, it takes away that need yeah. to have the big over. Um, whereas if you, you're going, going along more like your seven or eights, then you do really need that big over just to accelerate things a bit more. But Hinkley plays that off a pad out to mid-wicket for a single. Which must give then some hope for both these <coughs> two sides in their game to know that you don't necessarily have to have these big overs. You can just do it comfortably and smartly. 
Yeah, I think so. Probably two two different games, though. Uh, I mean, they've started, it's a bit more subdued, so they'll probably be looking to, what we spoke about in the first game, about picking a bowler and like, having a couple of bowls in the attack that you can really actually go after and get some big overs, because that'll just help accelerate your scoring. So if they can do that, if, if they're moving around the sixes, sevens, they'll be looking to try and consolidate a couple of big overs just to get that score up around, hopefully, that 150 mark. Flynn comes in again this time tonight, wide down the leg side for another wide. Did they, um, did the Gold Coast get someone to sort of, I mean, not that you could, but kind of replace, in inverted commas, Sammy Joe Johnson? Did they get a big fast bowler, the Gold Coast, or no? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I think the Gold Coast are quite lucky in that they've got some, a, a good squad, good depth. Um, quite so yeah, they had quite a few bowlers sort of get amongst the wickets. Yeah. And Grace Parsons with 20 for the season. Liza Flynn, we're watching at the moment, picked up 16 for the season. Roxanne Thompson, 19. So they've got a few bowlers thereabouts. Oh, <coughs> Roxanne that were, Thompson, yeah. They're fairly consistent across the year. Mm. Sammy Joe's a hard one to replace, not obviously yes, a bowler. Yes, that's right. <laughs> good, good, good all-rounder, so and good leader as well out there. Yeah, I was, I was reaching for the right word. Couldn't find it. That's the end of the second over. Wicket taking over. Although, if, shout out to Belinda McDougall if she's watching. <laughs> Formerly Matheson, Gold Coast player. It's her birthday today. Uh -huh. Okay. She turns 30. Brave to nominate sure the age. Well, I'm not. I've just made that up. She's oh. not 30. <laughs> I've watched her play. <laughs> I've watched her play quite a bit here. She runs around like she's 30, I'm sure. And at the Gold Coast. Thought she might have been out there. What better way to celebrate your birthday and play a game of cricket in the stinking hot sun? <laughs> That's right. That's right. 30, 30 degrees, yeah, 30th yeah. birthday. It's all all good. When are they going to bring Kim and Son? <laughs> Not now. Yeah. <laughs> Great this morning to see uh, Beth Mooney really having big long talks with the bowl young bowlers on her side uh, on, from Sandgate, just letting them know what was happening. Yeah, I think it's great. That's one of the benefits, isn't it, of having these players, the Australian players, back in yeah. playing club cricket. And to have them around, I think just even being out there with them will give a bit of some of these young players a bit of a lift. And um, they'll be pretty excited by that. And, and to be out there batting with them, I'm sure that they would be equally excited. And just being able to listen to what, what they say. Um, they obviously read the game quite well. Yes, uh, as Lisa Alexander, the former... Australian netball coach always says you've got to be able to see it to be it. So Yeah, correct. And I think just having someone out there with a, you know, when the ball's going everywhere, uh, just have someone with a considered view just to sit there and kind of point out what you need to do and break it down a little bit easier for the, for the young girls. Yep. Boss comes in again. <sighs> nice shot there from Hickley. Wow. He doesn't bother to move on that one. <laughs> It had four from the moment it left the bowler's hand, I think. It's interesting you say that. I remember a lot of the early Bulls players from the sides of the 90s talk about that they could sit in their club dressing room. I think it was Matthew Hayden would say, I'd be sitting in the club dressing room and I've got Alan Border sitting beside me. He played 100-odd test matches and there he is in our club dressing room just sitting and having a chat with us. <laughs> yeah, we had a... Um, very fortunate to have a, a dinner with... Um, we had a board meeting and... Haydos, AB, Casper, and must have been a couple of others were there, and they we're having this conversation exactly around that, and it was a, a topic about club cricket. Hinkley this time through mid wicket, just picks up the single. And how we can make it better and improve upon what's being done, and we're just trying to, what did they do back in, you know, Haydos when he was playing, and having the likes of someone like AB in your dressing room is absolutely phenomenal, and they did an analysis of the number of days that they played cricket and I think Haydos when he was playing Aussie stuff was playing exactly the same number of days of cricket as Alan Border had played except the difference being that AB had spent a lot of time playing club cricket mm. uh, back in the clubs and you know to have uh, I'd be pretty chuffed if I was someone in AB's dressing room and just to be able to sit there and pick his brain as much as you can goes behind square leg why not? They'll come back for two. I'm excited enough being at a field named after him, so... 
But that was that time too, because t- t- Jeff Thompson was back playing club cricket around the time. Um, yeah, and, and it's a super strong competition, isn't it? Yeah. If, for us, if, you, if you're talking about the Bulls, what makes a strong Bulls team? It's a strong, strong Premier Cricket um, competition. Yeah. So the more times that they can get in there and be playing club cricket, the better. Which will probably now start to be a challenge in, in the female system that the Australian players, as they start to play more and more international matches, get pulled out of the club scene. Yeah, it is, and you see it even around WBBL when a lot of these girls were leaving. So the competition, the nature of the competition changes when the, well, not just the Heat girls, but whenever now they're in a whole yeah. bunch of different teams. But Yeah, I was going to say, it's not only a drain. Whoop. Was it a close one? Not only a drain on from the Queensland sides, but of course now it's national. The teams are getting yeah. Queensland players uh, all over the country so yeah I mean it's it's a good thing for some of the girls that wouldn't otherwise get a as much as a go perhaps when some of the Queensland players are in and around but it certainly it changes the dynamic of the competition and that's not a bad thing it just means it's, it takes a different form so some of the teams that are strong with perhaps their state representative players in and around are perhaps not as strong when they go away and other teams kind of pick up the mantle. So it makes for a balanced competition, but certainly I, I think the more times that the women can be in and playing club cricket, the better. It's better for development. But they like the timing this year with them away during the season and here for the finals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here she is. It comes bowls her first <laughs> delivery to Hinkley for no run. It'd always be a bit of a running joke to see if you could still make the finals without your state players yeah. there, and then they're always back for because they've played just enough games. They're back for finals, so eligible to play. One for 16. Second ball of the fourth over. Hinkley goes long and high into the breeze. It's right on top of the bank, so breeze was never an option in that one. Goes for a good six, first six of the innings. Let's have a look at that. Let's see what that looks like. Just put it in the slot. Wow. The teammates looking after each other at uh, state level. A <laughs> little, bit, little bit higher, I think, by the look of the way her head went up when she uh, was watching how high that one went, but luckily long enough. Oof. Nice reply there from Kimmins. Slight change to field this time. <coughs> Mid wicket backed to the rope. Kimmins comes in again. Big gap there to pick up that single. Quite interesting, you look at Georgia Radamane when she's keeping, when she crouches down, she puts the, her gloves palm down near the stumps. Okay. Have a look. I find it's quite strange. I'm not a keeper, so I don't actually know <laughs> what, what you do or don't do, but it seems strange to put the palms here, what you're going to catch with. Well, they normally have them, yeah, up, as though you're ready to pouch the catch. But she's like she's giving a high 10 to the to the pitch and then <laughs> puts them back into a position. Uses a bit of a push up or something. Dries them off? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe just to help her get her balance in position because she does flick then at the last minute back to the standard um, palms up. She's very quick though. Exceptional hands. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's been great seeing her um, keep for so long. She's had a uh, few breaks, I think, due to her studies and whatnot, so it's, she's just uh, getting better all the time. You know you've now got me watching those gloves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to the game. You know what uh, you know what habits are like. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to break them. It's the end of the uh, fourth over. One for twenty-five. 
Valleys are after having won the toss and electing to bat. I'll be pretty happy hitting eight off that Kim and Sober. A bit of a challenge, not a, well clouds are, I was going to say not clouds, clouds, there are a few well away from where we are today, certainly far different to the start of the day when we started in pretty intense humidity with a lot of cloud cover, the humidity still stayed, but the clouds have disappeared to uh, nice sunny conditions for this afternoon match as we look for one of these two sides to meet Western Suburbs in tomorrow afternoon's grand final. What difference will that make, do you think, to the bowlers with uh, less cloud cover? It was quite low, wasn't it, this, at one point this morning? Carly Fuller now, the captain brought herself on to bowl. A bit of extra pace there, catches Georgia Main a bit under underprepared, standing up close. <laughs> well, speaking with some of the girls from the game that's just been played, there was a bit of talk that there was a little bit of movement in the deck. Um, so it was a little bit softer under underfoot, but it's been baked for a little while now, so I think it'll flatten out, so I don't think there'll be too much in it come tomorrow. Pulls that one out through mid-wicket. That'll go for four all the way. Yeah, afternoon innings or games are always that little bit different, aren't they? Yeah, usually you kind of hope that there's a little bit some, something, whether it swings early here. We were talking about that earlier, and... Just with a little bit of breeze as well, that might work for or against you, depending on which way you're swinging and on which end you're bowling from. But there's usually a little bit in the air. Because it's so humid, it will do a little bit. And there's generally something... If they put the covers on tonight, there might be a little bit of moisture underneath. The fellas will belt that out in the morning. Coming around the wicket this time. Takes it off a pad to mid-wicket for no run. It's obviously a fairly true bounce coming through because we didn't see a lot of mishits. So it wasn't sort of sticking in the wicket, but you're right, there were a few balls that did tend to move a little bit off the wicket. I think we saw Grace Harris just missed off that way where she played around. When she shoots 144, she deserved to be a little bit tired in her shot making. <laughs> More than 100 off of boundaries, that's just extraordinary. I think what they were saying though was true bounce. So it wasn't a tennis bully bounce. It was basically it's still going, still going through quite well. So mm. very good pitch to bat on. And if you're not doing anything, it'll be pretty easy to score runs. I mean, it's always easy from here, right? Like yeah, we, that's we, we right. Did. <laughs> I practically made 160 earlier today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Grace Harris that said something like uh, some people talk to her like that they actually were out there with it uh, playing cricket. <laughs> Big gap down through the gully area for four runs. For Hinkley is getting herself along nicely up to 17. Yeah, she's come in with a bit of intent, hasn't she? What's that run rate there? Billy? Uh, just under uh, eight and over, so they're going on a nice little cool. clip. Fuller again. Wide outside the off stump, the umpire calls wide. They'll also go through for a run on top of that as well. <coughs> Hinkley comes in with a bit of form across the season with 272 runs for the competition at a nice average of 90 with a high score of 94. So they'll certainly be looking for her to uh, anchor this valley side. Oh, oops. It's a very dangerous single. <laughs> Came off of them in the end. Yeah, yep. it did. <laughs> Made you look. <laughs> well, speaking of looking, I was just looking at what the test score was. India 5 for 15. Five for 15. Holy dooly. Wow. Could be over by today. <laughs> if you tickets for day four and five, you'd be feeling a bit nervous. 
Certainly for day five, you'll be nervous. Redmayne kind of, sort of enthusiastic about that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kirsten, thinking, looking at that score and, and having watched now we've seen a few over the years, the pink ball games, does the ball really dominate the bat in these matches? Unfairly, do you think? Oh, I think it's probably a bit of a turning point, isn't it? Uh, yeah. We've seen so many games where the bat dominates the ball, flat decks, um, they don't really even turn until you know, very, very late in the game as opposed to days a little bit on day two, three or a little bit of in the deck for the bowlers early. So I think it's it's unique. Um, novel, do we, do we need to move everything to a, a pink ball test? I don't think so. Kimmins again, gets pulled out through mid-wicket. Fielder out there, takes it on the bounce just for a single. It's nearly like batters will have averages with a red ball and a pink ball. Yeah, and I think there is quite, it would seem to be that there's quite a difference between it, but I don't know, I think Adelaide Oval, pink ball is quite nice, but give me a Gabba red ball, and I'd, I'd be pretty happy with that as well. And So I think it's something nice about having different test matches and each just having its own unique thing. Well, certainly, growing up watching cricket in the 70s and 80s, that's every ground had its own unique difference. You could yeah. say that Sydney's always going to spin, Brisbane will seem, but then flatten out. West Australia, the wacker was just fast bowlers, and Melbourne was a minefield. So every, every ground had its own unique. Adelaide, bat OK the first two days, and spin for the next three days after it. So, yes, you're probably right there. The pink ball does bring something unique to each ground to give some batsmen an advantage and, and some bowlers an advantage. Test out your techniques. As well as your strategy on when to bat and bowl with the pink ball. It always coincides with a new ball just when it's getting dark, lights come on, start swinging around corners. Yes. <laughs> some places. I don't think the Gabba would ever get a day-night test. I think, I'm not sure, I think the pink ball would be too deadly at the Gabba on a human night. Weren't they? They had a pink, but they had a day-night test, didn't they? Um, against, was it sh not Sri Lanka? Was it Sri Lanka? They had a day-night shield, there was a day-night shield match. I thought there was a day-night test against Sri Lanka okay. a couple of years ago. Bit of, uh, well, she's getting research. out the Mr. Googles. Yeah. Look out. Well, no, we're going to our research team that we have on board. With That's us. right. <laughs> Kimmins again coming into Hinkley. Plays up in the cover. Sharp single again. A chance of a run out and it's out. Yep. Lovely throw and equally great wicket keeping work. Sees not run out. They tempted fate a few times there, didn't they? And finally uh, she'd had enough. So, nice flat throw there into Redmayne, maybe a little bit high, but seeing it worked, there's no need to quibble. Day-night test against Pakistan. Well, uh, sure. Pakistan, was it? 2016. Ah, okay. I remember calling the Pakistan-Australia A game before that one, which was a day-night warm-up game in Cairns. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> it would have been a warm up. Well, yeah, it would have well, been certainly well, a bit warm. Well, it was even warm at night <laughs> up at Kazali Stadium there, but um, and the Pakistan team that at night time was swinging the ball all over the place. It's a great stadium though, Kazali's, isn't it? Oh, wonderful setup. It's, it's we are blessed for a whole number of great stadiums that you can play Test match cricket at around this nation. Um, but yeah, lovely stadium. It was a beautiful setup. And I remember that night, the Australian team, they got Pakistan out and then went into bat. Jimmy Pearson, I think, was the vice-captain of the Australia A side in that game. They were three for one in the, the four overs before stumps. It, the ball, 
um, Azar Ali, I think it was, just could get the ball to do anything, and the batters had no chance. Okay, so Brisbane got that game. And I hear we've got Marie Harris tuning in on the live stream. So, Marie, <laughs> welcome. New batsman in for Valleys as Charles. Was he just do doing the power play symbol there before? Yes, yeah, the end of the power play. We're yeah. into the seventh over. Another wicket down in the test. I'm moving around here. Yeah, it, will be <laughs> it will be over by, by today. Holly's Mind you, Australia just, still has to bat. Well, Holly's just confirmed. Cam Green with a screamer has got Coley. Six for 19. Goodness. Good chance. Oh, that was another run out. Chance duffed. She was gone. For all money there. Charles, we see the replay there. Fortunately, Parsons at the yeah. bowler's end couldn't. Just didn't pouch get it. there in time. Yeah. Wasn't set when it came in. Think about two, they'll come back. And again, a good throw would have had a chance. Uh, Just a bit of nerves coming in amongst somebody put both a, teams. Somebody put a camera on the valley coach. <laughs> must be having kittens down there. <laughs> Parsons coming in again with her leg spinners. Hinkley plays that out to covers for a single. Not necessarily a need for for panicking too much in some of these sharp singles, but. bit short, but uh, Charles couldn't get that one away. Twos win you the game, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the Queensland way. <laughs> it was. Holds facing up to Parsons. Nice bit of loop. Plays and misses outside the off stump. The end of the over. Five runs just coming off. Jimmy Parsons first over of a spell. Two for 48 off the seventh over. Fair bit of movement here. <laughs> Interesting little tactic here by Gold Coast, and Kimmins is coming back to bowl her third over, rather than <coughs> saving her for a few overs at the end in the death period, going in early. Gone for 13 off her first two. Yeah, I'm not sure who's been bowling the death o over for Gold Coast while they've all been away. Hinkley goes big and long for another six off the paling fence again. Second time she's taken Kimmins for six. Uh, she's liking those ones that just uh, aren't quite right on the money. It's just a nice swing, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Just frees her arms. <laughs> goes again, the fielder down there is coming in and will take the catch. No, <laughs> drops it. <laughs> Wow. Called her too early on taking that catch. I thought she was just going to patch that nice and simply. But Bit of a case of the dropsies across a few teams today, isn't yes. it? Yes. A couple going down. If I was her out there, I wouldn't be looking at DK. I'd just be walking slowly <laughs> back. <laughs> Vincent again to Hinkley. This time goes along the ground. If you backs to the bowl, you're invisible. So a well-known fact. <laughs> But it's just a little bit unusual because one of the highlights that have been of both the Australian national team and then in across the whole WBBL was the high quality fielding. 
that, that we're certainly seeing at, at the state level. Not yet coming down to the uh, club level for the girls, but it all takes time. Well, I think it's it's probably a testament to the amount of time that the girls at the WBBL and, and the WNCL um, in those respective teams spend uh, training as well. So, you know, it's, it's not surprising that there's a lot of investment that's gone into it and, and these girls that are playing the club, they, they simply don't have the time or... Um, oh, nice <laughs> shot. Four more. They're not doing it as a semi-professional job, so... It, it'll come along, and I yeah. think the, the more that they're exposed to it and, and the more they're playing on grounds like, like this, which is a beautiful ground and semi-final cricket where they're probably a little bit nervous. Um, but the more that they're doing it, the better they'll get. So I'm sure it'll come along, but it just takes a bit of time. Ooh, direct hit might have made a bigger difference. It's a great thing about women's sport, I reckon, because you can, if you've been playing for like a year, you could be in the same side as somebody who plays for Australia <laughs> in your club. So. Yes, I was going to say, certainly in your club. Yeah. I, I <clears throat> but I mean, the number of girls coming through, particularly if, if you say that from a purely cricket point of view, that there's so many girls coming through now that the depth is a hell of a lot greater as well. So they're coming through and, you know, mm -hmm. there's second grade, there's... Under 15s, two two teams under 15. So there's so many more girls coming through and playing the game. I don't think they're necessarily if, if they're pretty good, and a lot of girls that are playing as well as skillful across a couple of games, a couple of sports. So it kind of crosses over a little bit where they might be a bit further advanced than someone that's coming in as a bit of a freshie to the game. But there's certainly a lot of opportunity for these girls, and even if they're not playing with them, if they can see them and in and around training facilities and that's certainly going to improve their game, just being able to see people out there, what they do, learn from what a semi-professional, professional athlete does and just pick up little bits and pieces from what they do. Parsons coming into Hinkley. There's a Ooh. big swing <laughs> at that one. That was nearly stumped off the foot. Yes. The foot, the kick onto the stump. Is that still a stumping? By the keeper, is, yeah, by the keeper, I think technically it is. You get a single off the misfield. Yeah, probably comparing it back to, to your era, Kirsten, where there were only a handful of club sides and, and very skinny depth even behind those club sides. To now, yeah, where they're playing yeah, state cricket all the way down to, to 15s. Interstate carnivals. Yeah, look, I think it's a very different environment. Um, I think there was still a lot of strong players in the club scene that we might not have had the depth in terms of players, um, but there were still some very good players um, playing and very fortunate to have played along some pretty. Well, that's true. Was, was it the 80? Well, the Women's World Cup team that won it in India, was that 87, 88? Oh, was that the one where the player of the match won a car? Yeah. Had, uh, I'm, I'm just no, trying to it must have been later because I think Pricey was playing in that. Because at that stage there were quite a few Queenslanders in it because I remember the club side that I played in the men's, the, the ladies club side had a couple of girls that were over there in that, in that um, World Cup side. From from Brisbane, that was at Red Bank. Um, a few of the girls there, so it was. I'm sure it was the late '80s rather than the early '90s. I'm just trying to. Well, maybe it was the early '90s. I don't know. Yeah. It was the early '90s. It must 90s. have been in the '90s. Yeah. Well, Otherwise, so I think Price might take offence to her being in yeah. the '80s. Yeah. Maybe. What, yeah, <laughs> I'll let you yeah. have that conversation with her. <laughs> <laughs> early '90s. Because um, I just remember what it was when when those girls came back from that. Um, tournament back into just the club side, even for the men th themselves at that side. It, it was a bit of a bounce around the place. Well, I think a, a lot of um, the women back then were playing men's cricket as well. Like you, Karen Rolton was playing men's first grade. Um, Pricey obviously played 
I don't think she played in the first grade, but was playing in the men's competition and keeping as well. So it was just a different, a wholly different environment to what we're blessed with now. Mm. And there's structure, there's more funding to support it, which is fantastic. And, and you'll be able to see girls coming through from such a young age. I mean, there's girls playing, and I hadn't even didn't even know that there was women playing when I was half of these girls' ages. So, you know, they're coming through when they're like 10, 11, 12 and playing state cricket. So that's pretty amazing. And uh, as you were saying, Carol, the pathways that have opened up for all these girls is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. And they can see them. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's, a, yeah, it's not yeah. a secret. <laughs> Yeah, Everybody. you can definitely see it. I yeah. think it's still important that, you know, not everyone's going to, like every sport, not everyone's going to make it in the game. Yep. So. But that's great. That's what club's for. Yeah. And to get people playing and having people still stay in the game. I think what it used to be is you'd probably play and you'd be playing state cricket and once you kind of finish state cricket, you're not really playing and staying around the club scene. So. If the more people that are playing club and club becomes a, this environment like it does for the men's game, I guess, where everyone hangs out in the clubhouse and has a beer after the game. It makes it that really good atmosphere where people just want to play cricket. And that's why we play cricket, right? Because you love the game and you love basically being a bit enoughy and, and talking about it and, <laughs> and just living and breathing it. Got to get him addicted. <laughs> You've got to be addicted. It's Flynn. Slow full toss. Oh, oh, nearly picked up the catch. That would have been something. Hasn't been called a no ball, so obviously didn't get in above the waist. Not very far away either there, you can see on the replay. Flynn comes in again to Hinkley, right arm over. Again a bit of a slower delivery. Place it straight down the ground. the uh, fielding side encouraging each other along yeah, maybe we should do some of that <laughs> Charles has placed that into mid wicket for a single I should do it, you guys have been working all day it's the end of the over we get to uh, turn the halfway mark 2 for 79 Valleys after having won the toss and electing to bat, bit different to what we saw in the first game where Sangate Redcliffe won the toss and decided to bowl first. Some talk amongst the uh, learned spectators that Valleys aren't good at chasing, so they decide they bat first and take the lead. I think they had to chase last year. My memory serves and that didn't go so well. We're going to see Roxanne Thompson come in. She said earlier that... Uh, Taken 19 wickets at 16 for the season so far. A handy bowler to uh, come in as they turn for the second half of the innings. <laughs> Slow in the block hole, as they say.
first two balls going for dots. Yeah, they've just been chugging along nicely, haven't they? Uh, valleys. So it's, this feels like a change of weather here. In again to Childs. Gets to the pitch for this time, but can't piece the field. It's good line and length bowling. Forcing the batsman to uh, take a risk. Ooh. Back, Redmayne pretty quick to get the bales off in case that Charles had lifted her feet at any point. And she is fast. Yeah, quick hands. Tell you what, there's not much on that ball coming down either, is there? It's nah. like real off pace delivery. Forcing the batter to, to make their own, own pace with the ball. Still not getting it away there. It's quite a deceptive action because here the ball's coming out slower than the arm action sort of suggests. Proving to be effective. She's got the machine working today. Big appeal. She's oh been yeah. given out. <laughs> she Come off the pad. Not a lot of footwork, so she was trapped certainly well in front, as the replay will show us. And Charles is out, leg before, last ball of the over. Wicket maiden. Yep, asked the six interesting questions there and she couldn't answer the last one. Right. Wow. The fourth wicket falls with the score at 79 at the end of the 11th over. And an interesting batting card to have a look at there in Valleys with Hinkley scoring the bulk of the run so far for the Valley side. Yeah, you'd, you'd like to think somebody could hang around with her a bit more here. She needs, they need another good partnership, I think. To, what's a normal score? Because this morning it was just ridiculous. So <laughs> what's, what would be a normal T20 oh. score on, uh, today? Oh, it's, it's a bit hard to tell. I mean, it looks like a pretty good deck. Um, you... You'd be wanting at least 150, 160, I would have thought, but I mean, it's kind of heavily contingent upon what the bowling attacks look like, how well they bowl. Um, here, you would think probably these are the key pair from a Valley's um, batting partnership. So, crack that then. But if they get going, that they might be able to create something. Uh -oh. Hinkley goes again, the fielder out there is going to uh, drop it. Drop it and over the rope as well to compound the... No, just short I think. It dribbled over the rope. Maybe someone's put a little bit of butter on the ball. <laughs> goes up in the air, gets a little bit of butter and they can't catch it. Yeah. They all look quite sharp in the warm-ups before the match. Flinning into Hinkley again. <coughs> to be fair certainly to these two sides to, to compare them against what we saw in the previous game where if you take a Mooney out of Sandgate Redcliffe and you take Harris out of West then West fell away quite well quite quickly after both Harris was out early Harris got, not, got out late there wasn't a lot of depth to their side either A difficult scenario oh here we go oh gee a difficult scenario though as well if you're none for 230 and then all of a sudden you're two for 230 off with two overs to go it's a you're probably going out there and just having a bit of a dip um try and create something whereas i think the sandgate team was a bit more measured in terms of their approach to it and a different they were about well, what were they about three for four for yeah, that, that was three for not a lot. So kind of kept on losing. Apart from that 120 run partnership, kind of lost wickets along the way. So a bit different. Um, <laughs> but you'd be hoping that the Valleys girls here would be setting about 150 to make for an interesting chase. I, I think if Redamain here can play a very, very similar role to what Mooney did, um, she batted brilliantly during the WBBL. And I, I think as well with DK out there, she's one that can hit a good ball and hits it quite cleanly. So... She'll be uh, one of their key batters that they want to get out and 
subject to that, it, the, the chase may or may not take a similar form. But I think at least 50 comes up in that over as well. I think uh, Savage and Wheeler maybe have had... They're the ones who've had a couple of Wheelers, good dips. Uh, just one run short of 500 at an average mm. of 41 for the season, so... Georgia uh, Redmayne has hit 4.79 at 83, so she's had a very good um, season as well. And it'll be her turn to bat in the second innings. The Valleys have really relied on Hinkley and not for most of their runs this season. Not's already back in the, the sheds. Hinkley's still out there. She's going to pick up another two runs. That's going to roll away for four in the end. No matter how hard those girls were chasing it, they just couldn't get near it. Yeah, that really ran away from them there towards the grandstand. So, but yeah, Hinkley needs a bit of support here. Three for 92 off the 12th over. We'll, uh, I'll sit and adjust. I've worked on my mathematics. 14 overs is the magic over mark in T20 cricket. So that gives you an idea where they'll end up with at the 20th over. Okay. It's not quite a doubling of the score. Well, they wouldn't mind that if that was true. <laughs> I can rival Duckworth, Lewis and Stearns with their mathematical equations for rain affected games but <laughs> don't, don't mention and Thompson with that deceptive swing they finally get a run off her over first over going for that wicked maiden one for one nice figures if you can get them sure if she even got any bat on that in the end. Well, it was a click but I don't know whether it was oh, the umpire was happy enough to signal as two runs that's the bottom of the bat Swings, there's no one there. That'll go for four. Well placed. Just straying down the leg side. First over was pretty much on off stump. Breeze a bit stiffer now than it was in her first over. But almost straight behind her though. Swing. And this time she's <laughs> caught. There was no dropping that one into the the big meaty hands. Charlotte Voss. And Pre she's excited, isn't yeah, she? Pretty happy. Pretty that happy that one didn't hit the deck. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Yeah. They're all right with the uh, their infield catches. Michaela Hinkley's uh, little cameo. Thirty-eight delivery, thirty-nine deliveries for sixty-two comes to an end. Four for 99. Yeah, what are they going to do now? Before, having scored just over half the runs for Valleys. We'll see a replay of that catch. Just hit quite firmly, so it wasn't yeah. necessarily easy. It was sort of coming in at the face. <laughs> it was a thing of you either catch or it's going to break your nose. Now, sometimes self preservation yes. prevails. <laughs> That's all you need to take a good little catch right in front of your snoz. New batter for Valley is Letitia Randall. Letitia. She can hit. Yeah, yeah. A stalwart of the game. Yeah. Well, they got uh, Christina Colson coming in later too, so... And you've experienced. Absolutely, Randall. 
can't beat the point. Gibson's figures two for seven. One ball short of her second over. And backing up her good form through the season. I said 19 wickets she's taken through the competition. Comes to the end of the 13th over, four for 99 valleys. Thompson two for seven off two overs. Be pretty pleased with herself so far. Yeah, good little start. I think just that important wicket there of Hinkley um, is a key one for the Gold Coast out there. So big wicket. Um, yeah, Hinkley was looking like she was really settled in, wasn't she? So. Yeah, she, she seems to have a pretty clean strike in her. Uh, those couple of two sixes she monstered off DK just to cow corner um, were very clean, cleanly hit. So she seemed to be in good form and good wickets for, for the Gold Coast. And Captain's gone back to Charlotte Voss. Bowl her third over she just took that catch she might think she's uh oh she's certainly pumped pepped so up yeah <laughs> she might just drop one a little shorter here georgia Presswich facing up Presswich will certainly uh be one of those bowlers that valleys will be looking for in their innings She's had a bit of a transformational year, I think. L last year she got a little bit of a bowl with the, the WBBL and then this year took on a bit more of... She seemed to be bowling a few more overs, um, at critical overs as well, which I think is important uh, during the game. So. Yeah, I thought last year she really improved a lot um, as that season went on. I remember watching yeah. a spell of hers, or what we called the spell of hers up in Mackay. Um, against I was the just going to say, yeah. We... Where she, I think... Three three deliveries in a row, top of off stump. Yeah. You, you, you'd have been happy bowling them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they were just, they were just uh, unbelievable deliveries. Nice. And that Scorchers side was a pretty strong side because it had Divine and Bates and all those in them, and she just came through and just cleaned them all up. Yeah, she's, she's been doing a lot of work. Uh, I mean, I think it was only a couple of years ago where they were doing a little bit of work with the action because um, it was a little bit suspect, I think. Um, but she's, she's turned around. She's bowling really, really well. Looks really comfortable. Um, obviously a spectacular fielder and, and really leads the team when she's out in the field. So it's really good to see her getting some good pace and bowling well. Randall dinks that one down through the vacant third man area for a boundary. Well, at the end of that match, I decided that she was now the best bowler in her family. Oh, <laughs> don't tell Presto. <laughs> now better than a dad, better than a brother. <laughs> her brother bowled quite well, I thought, the other night. Um, he did. Who was that against? I can't remember, but seemed to bowl quite well. Good wheels. Maybe he's thrown a bit of pressure back on him to uh, match his sister. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like sibling robbery oh, to good. sharpen you up. It's good for you. Boss comes in again. Big yep. appeal. Big nick. And given. Oh, I was and waiting for the umpire see. to put a finger up. I didn't realise that the batter had actually walked. Yeah. You could hear that in Nunda. And after having got a boundary, the ball before. Nick's one behind. And Boss picks up a catch in the over before. And now a wicket off her own bowling. So we're at the 14th. Is, uh, is it now you do your sums, Billy? Five for 108. Oh, there's still one ball to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's very, we'll preci very precise sides. Well, because you take into account the number of wickets. Oh, that have okay. As well. Yep. And so it is an element of the Duckworth Lewis Stearns. But your own version, and do yes. we put a couple of derivatives in there just oh, to make it a little bit more complex? <laughs> DLSD or something? <laughs> No, it doesn't work in the rain. The rain one, I, I it don't doesn't. Know. I've, I've looked at that Duckworth Lewis Stearns. I have no idea how they... I just think they put numbers in a barrel and pull them out. 
but the, re the resultant ask always just seems so unfair to me. <laughs> like, no one's ever told me what Stern's added to the equation because it was just the Duckworth Lewis and then... Harsh a criticism a by, by the sound of his name. Or if he wasn't part of the marketing. No. He wasn't part of the marketing team. Because Duckworth and Lewis obviously did that. And <laughs> yes. Left old poor Stern <laughs> down. They were the hype boys. Yeah, everyone forgot about him. <laughs> and he did obviously did something to it and then he gets gets the credit later. Well, he's now back in, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe they had a bit of a falling out. So. Big appeal. Anyway, hopefully we won't have to resort to those gentlemen at all this weekend. Not at the moment. It's the end of the 14th over. Five for 108. As we uh, put it, all the figures into the conundrum, 152. Okay. 152 is what you've landed 152. at. 152. Is that when you've got over 14 multiplied by 3 divided by 2 and add 1.5%? Yes, had they been under two wickets down, you would have doubled <laughs> the figure, but you then subtract figures once they've gone past the two wickets said, down stage. You said uh, 150 without any pens or anything, so, gee, it must be right. Call okay. me Rain Man. <laughs> Well, I did get 15 runs and over based on my very terrible maths uh -huh. in the first game. You did game. very well, I know. Plays that one down the ground just for a single. So in these final six overs of the innings, the challenge, so five wickets are already down. Thompson certainly uh, bowling nice and tight. Yeah, she's having a belter. <laughs> that said, the Valleys only need to just sort of knock it around. These ball and over, and they pick themselves up 36 runs just to ball and over from here till the end. Just that odd boundary to kick themselves along. Full toss on the leg stump. There's a big gap down there. Yeah, they're going to get two leg. at least. Wind picking up as you can hear. sophisticated our coverage than when we used to be up here just doing audio back in the day. Thompson coming in again. Presswood's just playing it down the ground. Phil comes in off the rope. Just keep it to a single. like something to happen, I gather, from the chatter out there. Big swing, big appeal. Uh, not Should enough to impress the umpire. Was there a... No, 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 I think it was going for the catch. The bail's ah. still on the stump, so I think thought that she might have pulled it around back into the gloves, as we'll see gotcha. on the replay. The bowler just a little bit... Oh, coming under the... thought she might have taken the bottom of the gloves. Just a little bit slow going up there. Yeah. But um, no. <laughs> she waited three seconds before she put her hand up after George Redmayne at <laughs> the field. Bit of a chat going on there. The umpire's pulled something out to show the uh, captain and keeper something. Yep. How many overs, maybe? This will be her last one, I think. Is that right? No, yeah. no, no this is Fuller coming back on the board. Oh, right. Oh, I was thinking it was, yeah. 
just misidentified her. I think it was Voss coming back. Chris Bridge to uh, face up. Cutting outside a leg stump. Plays that through mid wicket. Fielder out on the rope. Just keep it down to a single. And like you're saying, Billy, that's really all Prestridge has to do. Yeah. If you knock it around for a single and, and maybe find a boundary every now and then or even a two, you get yourself back up to that 150. It should be a reasonable run chase. That's going to go all the way for yep. six. <laughs> that got some height, didn't it? It, it certainly did. did. Might have almost, if it wasn't going to rain, it's almost going to bring the rain, that <laughs> yeah. one. Wouldn't it land on over there, is it? It's on the other side of the fence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hit the concrete, maybe, is what that noise yeah, was. Just a bit to uh, take a mark out of the ball. How's the test cricket match going? Oh, I thought it was just busting me, having a little sticky, but Where? 8 for 31. 8 for 31? Hazelwell was on a hat trick before. Holy dearly. Doesn't beat the field. Nice bit of fielding down there. Yeah, great stop. Keeps it just to a single. herself up to eight. Six of those runs coming in just one shot. Ball before. Pull this time to Presswich. Nine for 31. Oh no. They may not get to tea. No, they will get to tea. Holly's very kindly giving me an update. Hazelwood, five for three. <laughs> Holy dooly. Lucky they finished, what, 60 runs ahead nearly. Uh, oh so it still God. gives Australia about 90 runs to chase. Maybe someone just came in overnight without seeing and watered a good length. Yeah. Little, little patch. And your India does have a pretty fair uh, pace attack as well, so I think they're pretty harsh on some of the Australian batters. Because I think some of the better batters of it, previous eras would have battled against Boomerah, etc. Yesterday with the pink ball. Again, tries to get it down the leg side, no run. Even the great Steve Smith batted for what 30 odd balls for one run. <laughs> Hard day at the office. Lexi Muller's been playing for the Gold Coast since she was pretty young, I remember misidentifying her and uh, not knowing that her dad was keeping score just a couple of metres to my right. Uh, he, he shared with me what he thought about my lack of knowledge there. <laughs> so if you're listening, Mr Muller, <laughs> I've learnt now. <laughs> Plus they've put uh, numbers on the back, so we've got to love that. Wind again picking up, gusting in. Nice little sea breeze to uh, cool the players off. Oh. Hmm. Pretty good at that lateral running and making a stop on the bounce or grabbing a catch out of mid-air these days. Most players, most players who were put in the outfield. Change of field. Uh, 
Parsons in again to Moa. As a big swing goes in the air, oh. the fielder getting underneath that one, takes the catch. And that was Roxanne Thompson. They just moved her exactly there. <laughs> it's not a catch. Oh, it was a no ball. No ball. Free oh. hit. Oh, that was the, the best laid plans of mice yeah. and men. Holy man. That just worked perfectly. I was so busy watching to make sure she actually caught it. I didn't. I didn't see the signal. I didn't see the signal either. <laughs> oh, bolder this bold. time. Nice delivery. Nice bit of loop. It's that, Presbridge coming down the wicket, playing all around that one. That one hit Redmayne, and it hurt by the looks. Where did it get her? Yep. Oh, right in the chest. Ow. That was that was <laughs> classic leg spin bowling. How unpleasant. Presswich out bowled Parsons for ten. Six for one twenty five off sixteen and a half overs. Challenge now for the Valley's batters is to uh, bat through their whole twenty overs. Yeah, that's right, this <coughs> Got here. New batsman coming out, Geneve Bond. Genevieve Bond. Probably not expecting to have to do much today, I'd wager. A nice little spell here from Parsons. As I said earlier, picked up 20 wickets for the season, only at 11.9. This figures are 5 for 17. We've started to get a bit of a glimpse today of why she's been pretty effective across the season. Yep. She's had a good, good last probably two, two and a half seasons. in that catching position again. Let's see if they fall for it again. And she stumped her. Oh. <laughs> One way or the other. They're playing all around <laughs> her this afternoon. Yeah. Parsons picks up her second wicket and the second wicket in the over as well. Having Muller stumped very neatly by Redmayne. We see the replay just spins it past the outside edge of the bat. Yeah, she was well away from home there. Seventh wicket falls with a score on 126. And brings Sophie Maddox out to bat. Nice bit of work by the keeper. All the wickets messing up your mass there a little bit. Well, Maybe. Certainly not going to reach. Well, no, I don't. We've got a little while to go yet. Yeah. I'd be surprised at 152. It's been a steady stream. It's only 26 more. Got to accentuate the positive. Parsons' <laughs> last ball of the third over. There you go. Goes down the leg side, gets pulled behind. Big space down there, that's going to hit the slope and roll to the rope for yep. runs. Well done. A nice bit of cheer from the uh, Valleys have brought on half the club, I think, by the sounds of that <laughs> cheer. <laughs> well, they just fall into a little bit of a hole there, so they're happy about it. Seventeen overs down, seven for hundred and thirty. Three overs remaining. The commence is coming back on to bowl her fourth and final over. Been a little bit expensive today by her standards. Yeah, 
pretty exhausting year like the rest of us. <laughs> Imagine. to believe that was this year that she was playing in the World Cup, isn't it? It's yeah, weird to think it's, that. it's weird playing to think it was the same year. <laughs> playing in front of 86,000 yep. people. I mean, a similar number out here today at Allen Border Oval. Yep. In Valley's numbers, cheering along. Well, <laughs> certainly putting up the noise to be like that. <laughs> but no, pretty phenomenal, isn't it, to, to go from that at the start of the year and... Such an amazing atmosphere there, and just the support that Australia put around that Women's World Cup was extraordinary. And really nice to see some of our Queensland girls playing key roles in that tournament as well, with obviously DK out there and bowling spectacularly, and Jono and uh, Mooney having exceptional tournaments as well. So. Really exciting to, to see that and not just being a part of it, but playing a critical role in that team. Yeah. Well, it's heartening for me. We talked before about Holly Furling, and there's elements of um, Delissa's story that sort of follows similar, where she was an early um, put into the Australian team quite early um, as an 18 or 19 year old, and then on a contract, and then sort of not so much lost away, but just form slipped away a bit and now she's come back later in her career and become a, a strong part of that Australian side. Yeah, I think a lot of it's just being in the right headspace as well and obviously DK took a little bit of time out and went over to the UK and, and re-found her love of the game and I think just loving what you do is so important to being able to do it well and being happy with what you do. So for her, it's great to see that she's back out there and hopefully loving the game still. Mm, yeah. Um, and just really enjoying it because, you know, she's such a great athlete and she's done a fantastic job for Queensland over the years. And, you know, to, to be out here with, she, she's actually someone as well that really enjoys going back and playing club cricket. And you'll see her out there with the Gold Coast girls. And I think it's, it just leads by example with them. Um, and it's, it's a real credit to her. Yeah, I interviewed her once and she said she thought that maybe the, um, of all the things, maybe that season with the AFLW with the Lions was um she said it was really interesting and taught her a lot of things about how much she loved cricket so <laughs> yeah yeah it's great i mean and what an athlete as well to be able to go out there and play yeah. in the aflw well she also had a season at top level um soccer in brisbane as well and applied to be a firefighter oh. yeah and, yeah and went pretty close to becoming a firefighter which is a pretty mean fitness effort for a female stay in your lane man gee <laughs> She's pretty fit. Get someone out. Big space down there. A lot of work to be done by the square leg. Just keeps it to a single though. That was pretty terrible running. By the Valley's girls. Should have picked up a second. Second last over here. See what they can do. Again, similar shot this time a bit more forcefully for a single. <laughs> yeah, that last spell from last over from Kim, it's only two runs off it, so it just shows the, the importance of her coming late just to keep things settled. Both these batters giving Parsons a fair bit of respect after she picked up two wickets in the previous over. All the big thinkers now saying this is the really important over to get control of the batters on, so not a surprise it's Parsons. Who does that leave to bowl out? Do you reckon? Still an over to come, there's Voss, Flynn and Fuller herself. Thompson, I think, still got an over as well, so they've got plenty to choose from. Yeah. They've used six bowlers so far across 
the 18 overs that have been bowled. One over to, to go, so I think they'll go with Thompson. Well, you would, order. wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> going down and handing a cap to the umpire. Two for 12. I think she earned the right. I haven't really shown as much intent in the last couple of overs. I think since um, so McKinley got out that the intense kind of dropped off from the valleys that, that they are turning it over but I would have liked to have seen them have a bit of a crack in these last couple of overs and really try and accelerate. I know they've got only a couple of wickets in hand but um, you might have been able to get a couple of sneaky fours away and not just strip a single or, or bat out you know uh, four dot balls and, and two singles in a DK over for example so I would have liked to have seen them go a little bit harder and, and just try and it, it, it's taking a risk and but at this point in the game, in a semi-final, you do need to start to open up at this time in the innings. Well, it's just the one over left. Six balls, six legal deliveries. Still got three wickets up their sleeve, so they need to go hard and early. Get someone out to mid-wicket. And maybe just a little quicker in their running between wickets to put some pressure back on the fielding side as well. It's just going to have a... I don't know. Is that long enough to say run harder? I don't know. <laughs> Thompson in the bond goes high. There's fielders running in for that. Are they going to get there in ah. time? No. Need to come back for the second, which they do. Rich applause coming in from that Valley Cheer squad. <laughs> Just underneath us. That's right. The 86,000 here at the Allen Border Oval. Yep. I think they're actually sitting in the Stuart Law, which would be the Valley's uh, grandstand as well here. Goodness, <laughs> even choosing their own grandstand. <laughs> oh. It's very patriotic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Electing only to sit in that one. I'm not sure they'd be anyone from Gold Coast to be brave to sit down in there. Just showing how, how special that is, that pace off the ball, because she was halfway through a shot before she realised the ball hadn't even got to her. Had to check it in the end, just bunts it on the end of the bat. Just the three runs off the first four balls of this over. Longfield coming in there, takes it on the bounce. There's a good bit of feeling because you don't know whether you run in to try and catch it or... Yeah, yeah. tremendous bit of feeling out there. I mean, brave to, to come in. That could have easily have got a run in this shin, so... Yeah. Good hands, kept low and well balanced and a nice throw in as well to the bowler. Last ball of the innings. Plays it down to mid on. Nicely hit conservatively throws it back. The umpires say, that'll do. That's the 20 overs down. And Valley's finished their uh, 20 overs at 7 for 140. Is it enough? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's probably a bit too short. Um, they got off to a good start and, and just really lost their way, I thought, in the back end of that innings and left a number of runs out there. Good bowling performance by the Gold Coast. Um, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough, particularly if uh, Redemain and, and DK get going um, early on and, and they could easily kind of swallow up that target pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, well, they turned the 10th over mark at just two down for 79, so their second 10 overs was not as productive as their first 10 overs, um, which, yes, again, backs up what you were saying before, Kirsten, that they were just slow through that second 10 overs. Yeah, and I reckon it's probably even that last seven you could probably pinpoint. I think they got a, f a few in that the first, either two or three in that second, the back end of the ten, but just a, a really a bit slow, probably laboured a little bit. Um, might have been just because they were just trying to hang in there and, and get some singles, but uh, I think they left a few runs out there, but a solid performance by the Gold Coast. Well, it certainly is. Seven for 140. Highlights of the innings, that's 62 by Michaela Hinckley.
um, and everyone else just contributing only tiny little amounts to that innings of 7 for 140 and a quick look at the bowling figures shared amongst all the bowlers for the Gold Coast one for Voss, one for Flynn two for Parsons and two for Thompson as well well, it's a uh, 10 minute gap between the innings. We'll have that opportunity ourselves to go off and get a drink while you go and do the same thing. And we'll catch up in 10 minutes' time to see the run chase by Gold Coast against Valleys here in the second semi final.
We're back for the uh, second half of the second semi-final in today's Catherine Raymond Shield semi-final in the T20 competition being played between Gold Coast and Valleys. We've already seen Valleys uh, win the toss, bat first, and set a score of 141 for the Gold Coast team to chase to see if they've got a chance of winning this match. In what could be uh, an, an interesting challenge. Kirsten Pike, in your experience, are you prepared to back anyone through on this one? Oh, I think my money is with Gold Coast. Gold Coast? Um, I think it's a really important opening spell here by, um, I was going to say Georgia, but that could be a couple of Georgias out there, but by <laughs> Presto, so <laughs> this would be a, a critical start for them to get off on a, on a good way. So certainly uh, up for it, the Valley's fielders, they're all come running in from all over the place like ants to the honey. Yeah, they had a big pump-up session down here uh, just near the rope before they all went out, so they're charged. I think we were talking about it earlier today where sometimes these smaller chases are actually a bit more difficult to do because you kind of go in there and you, you get bogged down a little bit because you, you're not so um, you need to accelerate as quickly as you, you would on say a 234 chase, but there we go. That's a cracking shot there by uh, <laughs> Redmayne. Beautiful shot. Lovely uh, shot there from Redmayne to, uh, in the Battle of Georges, Presswich versus Redmayne, and uh, first points. Redmayne with that four. She certainly had a great year with the bat, Redmayne, so. Looking forward to it. Well, as I said before, 499 runs in this competition at 83 with a highest score of 146. So she comes in with certainly a lot of form. She might just get them all herself. Oh, touch wood. I'm a great Jonah, so I'll be quiet now. The other one to uh, watch Tara Wheeler at the other end, she's also hit 499 herself at 41. Uh, she's hit 15 sixes for the season with 62 fours. <laughs> 15 sixes, crazy nearly hit about 15 sixes in, a <laughs> in an innings. <laughs> in an innings. But that's extraordinary though, isn't I it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that we can use either uh, Harris's as any kind of ruler. It's <laughs> an exception rather than the norm. Well, <laughs> she came into this match with 36s for the season and 77 fours, Grace Harris. Right. 77 fours, that's a light season, isn't it? Yeah. It needs to work a bit harder on that. <laughs> Tara Wheeler not far behind, as I said, with uh, 62 fours. and gets that one fine between the keeper and fine leg for another four. Good start to their innings. Just helping that one along there. Prestridge bowling, of course, with a bit of curry. It's an exceptional number of boundaries, isn't it? When, when you yep. start thinking about that, and that's just one batter, and it's, 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 a, it's a lot of runs. Maybe that's the key these days, just hit boundaries, seems simple. Get a that's little bit less pop. That's why they spend all that time with the weights, I guess. Although they say it's timing. They keep saying it's nothing to do with weights, it's the timing. But <laughs> it's got to help, surely, to be very strong. Well, speaking of the Harris's, is that one that Laura Harris played oh. in... Um, must have been in... Before the semi-final... I think it may have been. Anyway, mm. she monstered for six, a reverse sweep, and yep. my gosh, it just it just went. I think it um, must have been in the Aussie T20 game not long after that. Um, Maxwell played a very, very similar shot, and I don't know who hit it further, Laura or, or Maxie. So <laughs> phenomenal hitting, but just really, I think particularly if you, if you use Laura Haas as an example, just to see her step up this season and really make the most of her, her opportunities and she had a fantastic season and, and really, I think she turned the game on its head on a number of occasions and to come in in such pressure environment and, and do that uh, to me really speaks to how she's transformed as a player over the last couple of years and, and really stood up this season. Yep. 
couldn't do it that one last time, but she can't do everything. The second over, none for eight. Lexi Muller bowling the uh, second over of this innings. And, and you're right there, Kirsten, too, because Laura's been one of those players for a number of years. We've all sort of watched and waited. You get the, just the occasional little glimpse of what she's possible of, but this year's, as I guess, one of the more senior players in that team now. Um, she really did step up and lead the way with the batting. And I think anyone that can reverse hit a six, doesn't matter how far, is, is doing pretty <laughs> good because... A, it's a challenge trying to control it, let alone then still hit it that far. Yeah, there were a few things she hit that meant that the commentators were just going, I'm not even sure what to call that, except six. Anyway, all things that everyone out here today can aspire to. Dara Wheeler gets herself off the mark with that single. School meanders up to 10. Keith, certainly, well, it's the key in any game is to take wickets, but certainly the Valley side, if they can have a chance of trying to defend this 140, need to get some pretty early wickets before these two get themselves set and going. Yep. Yes, it advanced their cause a lot if they got rid of one of these two. But the beauty of batting second, of course, these guys know what has to happen, so they know what the sums are. Certainly a handy acquisition for uh, for the Brisbane club scene and for the, the Brisbane Heat this year is Georgia Redmayne coming up. Has she come up last year? And yeah, didn't yeah, play she's WBBL? Yeah. Uh, she, she, she played, hasn't played WBBL. She played for the, um, over in the Scorchers. Fire, didn't she, yeah. last yeah, year? Yeah, Fire yeah. last year and, and played in the Scorchers um, after leaving the Hurricanes to go, go play there for a year and probably middle order bat over there. Lovely shot, but yeah, in in having such a a professional career as as a doctor in a hospital in a pandemic year, uh, and and to be able to produce some great cricket in WBBL and and now for her own club side. Well, it all starts with your club, doesn't it? So, producing good performances here at the club scene, and then obviously elevating it to the next level in in WBBL, and hopefully, come WNCL that. But that's where your performances start. So if you're not putting on good performances here at the Clubland, you're probably going to be not performing. At, well, there, there are obviously exceptions to every rule, and mm. um, it's more of a generalisation. But you'd think if you're not if you're not scoring bucket loads of runs here, you're probably not making runs at the next level. She played for the Gold Coast for a while, of course, being based there at the hospital. Another four runs, back-to-back -back boundaries to uh, end. Muller's first over, and none for 18. Gold it's Coast getting off to a good start. Yep. It's exciting though, isn't it, to see um, Georgia out there and being uh, full-time. She's still working full-time, not sure, but mm. just being um, in the medical field as a, and as a doctor, kind of having people that, that are doing that in and around squads I think is critical for future development and for players to see coming up that you can still actually gain employment, be that full-time, part-time or whatever your heart might fancy, but just doing something that's extracurricular outside of cricket to ensure that there's balance. Well, we were just talking about Laura Kimmins, weren't we? And she's full-time. Brings a level of grounding, I think, to not just to yourself as a player, but to, yeah, to everyone else around you. Yeah, I certainly think that's right. and. 
You know, cricket can be all-consuming at times, so a bad game at cricket, if, if cricket's the only thing you do, you can kind of sit there and mull over it for a bit rather than going out and being distracted by other people's problems just for a little bit as well. <laughs> Long appeal, or was that the batsman complaining that it hit the thigh pad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that hurts. <laughs> you get a leg by around the corner. Pretty sure that was hope, <laughs> not pain. <laughs> They're working on it here, Valleys, trying to find a chink. Go short, the fielder out there at square leg, uh, but looking into the sun makes it extremely difficult, but that was well hit by Red May. Yeah. Wasn't much stopping that one. She got now 20 <laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah, Redman came into this with uh, 75 fours for the season. Huh. So she wasn't, she's only two fours behind Grace Harris. Uh, but only five sixes. Only five. Only five. <laughs> And, and I, I say that interestingly because I still remember the first six I ever saw in WBBL hit, and that was Sophie Devine down at Glenelg ground, actually, um, about three or four seasons ago, where um, everyone marvelled at because very few women at that point were, were clearing the boundary. And, and we all thought it was just because of her hockey background, because she, she flicked it like they do in hockey with the, mm -hmm. with the wrists. Um, whereas now it's just commonplace for all of them to clear the rope. I remember watching, uh, it must have been club, I don't think it was the fire, and Delissa Kimmins put three on top of the roof over mm. on the Queensland cricket offices there. Back in the day. When she got a chance to bat. I think, yeah, I was watching the test, and it must have been Slats that put up this image and it's a must have been a grey nick a grey nick bat as it is today and a grey nick back when he was batting and just the thickness of the bats <laughs> and how they've changed from being a bit of a matchstick to to what they are now so I'm sure that no doubt gives a little bit more yep. emphasis on, on the ball and it's sailing away as it so commonly does now like golf clubs <laughs> Wheeler gets that one away for four, picks that gap between the uh, point up close and the third man. And this match is starting to uh, get taken away a little bit from the Valley side. They're up to none for 29 and still in the third over. Yeah, they need to think of something here. Freshbridge's second over finishes, none for 18 of her two overs, none for 29. Chasing 141 for victory. Uh, Coulson's just run and got the helmet for her wicket keeper. Which tells you something about the bowler who's coming on. Uh, Maddox. discussions here. Between captain and bowler about all the good things that may happen here. Bit of spin. See how that goes. The 
still within the uh, power play. It's only two allowed out. They're out at mid wicket and Square Lake. Huge space though, just <coughs> on the onside area. She opens up with a wide. But yeah, with that sort of feel, she's got to be keeping very close or very wide on that offside to keep it away from the uh, leg side. <laughs> trying to uh, sweep around. This seems quite a tense contest here. <laughs> this time she gets everything on She's the bat on it and that'll all roll away for four runs. Fix that. Obviously the uh, sweep, one of her favoured shots. Be hitting with the breeze. Full toss outside, off stump gets baseball hit straight back down the ground for four runs. Yeah, just not getting it where she wants it to go, is she, yeah. Maddox. All very different deliveries, so I'm yeah. not sure if she is clear in her own mind where she wants to bowl it. The first one was obviously wide outside off stump, and they've, a, they've got a bit of a, a coverage on that offside, but still pretty straightish field. Floats a couple down leg, and, and obviously that one just a big fully that got dispatched. That's about a better line. Good correction yeah. from the ball before. I think sometimes when a bowler's thinking not leg side, not leg side, not leg side, and then that's the only thing that happens. In full toss, goes straight down the ground for four runs. Probably not the most encouraging field setting for the bowler either. She may need to sort of go round the wicket to try and get it a bit closer to the body of Redmayne at least. Mm. See if she can get a good one in here. She goes back, gets it between that little gap there. It's going to roll away for four runs, three fours in a row. Big over there and not a bad one to finish that power play, is it? No. Four boundaries, a wide. I guess I was encouraging Colson to try something, so <laughs> she did, so I can't complain. <laughs> but that last one, it was okay, just a little bit wide and, and gave her a little bit too much width, but better in intent, in I think. W what With the feel that she's got, she's got the coverage out there for the sweep shot, but she's bowling wide of off stump, so... She's just got, got to work out what her line is going yeah. to be. It's difficult to sweep it when it's that far out, so she just needs to work that out, and I'm sure if she gets another over, then she'll correct that in, in a second spell. Yeah. Maybe use the fact that she's bowling into that stiff breeze a little bit more. Might be good mm. too if she can. Probably needs to bowl from the other end, so the breeze Maybe. is... Taking mm. it to the, the offside here, the breeze was br always bringing it to the leg side of Road mm. Main. That's a strength. Good point. But anyway, it's an easy game from up here. Yep. And sometimes you just have shocking overs, and, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, whatever you try just doesn't work. So <laughs> we all have them, and she won't be alone out there. And there's been a few today, not just in this game, but in, in the game before. So yep. these things happen, but. They do. So the, the only thing I can hold on to is that. I played before there was video camera, so there's yeah. no, there's, there's nothing, <laughs> there's not nothing the on YouTube. Other. There's no, it, it may never have ever happened. I'm <laughs> seeing Charlie not um, start her first spell to Tara Wheeler who's getting a bit lost in the slipstream of Georgia Main, Red Main. I think 
she's got some bat on to that. Just gonna, I'll just come back for the two. Yes. Yeah, got a little bit of bat in that. She really takes the pace off when she bowls, Charlie. So it's a bit of a, it's a slower delivery. So you got to be a little bit more patient as the batter just down that other end and, and wait for it to come to you. Again, same shot. This time the fielder placed back there for that shot. Just keeps it to a single. Wheeler gets herself up to eight off eight. Red mate, 37, only off 19 deliveries so far. So going at nearly 200 a strike rate. She can come around, is she? Yep. And again, she's got the protection on the leg side. Offside field in close. So she's going to have to work hard to keep it away from the pads of Redmayne. But I think that's a better strategy to come around the wicket and try and tuck her up a bit. Well, she's got the protection there. She's got someone just back a point and almost like a... got two backwards points that so what she'll be looking to do is just draw Redamane forward and try and get her hitting through that area but maybe a bit of a miscue. She's making her impatient so that's good for Valleys. Well, it's missed everything. They'll get called wides and they'll run two wides. Brings up the uh, 50 as well, 52 without loss. So one ball left in the fifth <laughs> over. Gee. The misfield will bring a single up. And that'll finish Knott's first over. Seven runs coming off it. And for 53. So they're going at a bit over 10 and they need a bit over 7, right? Getting to the point where they really, really need a wicket there, Valleys. change in the bowling I think as well. Can't see if that's a 23 or a 33 on her back there. It's a 33. Okay. Uh, Abby, Abby Harris. It's a good day, been a good day for Harris's, you never know. Strike on 38. Whippy. <laughs> yeah, like a bit of a hot shoe shuffle. Yeah, the, there was some for takeoff. There was something in the action there. Might have just been a. Didn't quite have the run up right. Correct her uh. steps as she goes to remeasure it. Pulls that one backward of square leg. That's four runs. Pitched it too short. Yeah, still not, not quite right on the run up, I think. Still had that little stutter step in before she... It's almost like she goes to bowl off the wrong foot. She's 
bowlers out the mark again. Obviously not one of the uh, senior bowlers because he hasn't got the black paint marks on the ground to show where run-ups is like all the other bowlers have. Ooh. Oh, she's got a bad skip in there. Yeah, it's a skip. Must feel natural for her, so if it feels natural, then, yeah. <laughs> then go ahead and do it. I'm all for that. Yeah. I just think it might not look let's, like... Let's see. Here we are. Yep. There we go. May not look like everyone else's, but if it works for her, then <laughs> keep it in. She has that extra Thanks, skip Mitch. at the... Uh, at the crease as well. Clear, just clears point. Bit of a chase, they'll just get the single. Well, she doesn't seem too upset by it, so it must be part of her normal rhythm. I'll measure out the run up again. Whatever floats your boat, but I just keep worrying she's gonna step over. Brings Weller on strike. She's just faced the eight delivery so far. Had a lot of the strike. Gets that one out through point. A long chase for the girls. It's gonna roll all the way to the right for four. spinning when it came off the bat. Again, just discipline there, not in the valleys bowling at this moment. I'm just beginning to think that end's a bit of a bugger to bowl from. It was a good area to finish on. That was a good delivery there, just nice and full. Yep. Bowled straight to the field, so strong finish, but a couple of just misses in the middle of the over. None for 62. The end of the uh, power play period. Two for 43 valleys were at the same time. But again, valleys. A little bit like what we saw in the uh, in the earlier match with Sangat Redcliffe, not necessarily having a lot of bowlers in the uh, the top 15 stats for the season. Valleys are in the same way, just the one bowler that's made that top 15 in Sophie Maddox with 18 wickets, whereas Gold Coast in this match have had four bowlers making that top list, so it will be a bit of a challenge for this younger bowling attack. Charlie not to bowl her second over. Big space behind square leg. Goes in front of square leg instead for six. In the picket fence on the fall. Another picket broken. Slowly going around and picking them off. Oh, yes. That was a bad pun, wasn't it? <laughs> It'll be a bit of work for the maintenance team on Monday. I remember seeing Courtney Hill get rid of about four just over here with her head one time, and the rope was quite close to the pickets, trying to field. Very short fielder out there, but she's got no chance of getting that one. Another picket. <laughs> going to be a new maintenance, <laughs> uh, new line in the in the budget on maintenance. I'll have to ask Birdie just to <laughs> see if he's on duty and make a little note in the book. Him off. <laughs> well, look, uh, later this year or next year, I should say, we're at the end of this year. This will all be redone, yeah. so uh -huh. it'll be looking sh very, very schmick. Uh, it's beautiful now. Because I think the hill area is out of bounds at the moment part of it. I, I know that for a fair bit of this year they haven't been allowed people on that grass area. Uh, I think um, part of the COVID safe 
policy um, meant that people couldn't be sitting up there but it will get all kind of pushed back so they'll make this a international accredited ground in terms of size uh. which will allow us to have some more international games here and hopefully sort some more of the women's games and and lift it into a ICC standard which would be fantastic and mm. fingers crossed at time we can get it all lit and the training facilities at the top will be well lit so it'll really transform into a fantastic training facility better than what it is currently now which is is pretty phenomenal as well the school board here still has uh, Australia New Zealand on it from the one day and T20s from earlier this year Seven overs down with none for 76. Well, that's right, with the uh, centre of excellence base here as well. Um, it'd be great just to continue the, Im the improvement on facilities. It's hard to think they can improve when you look out there today, isn't it? The, <laughs> the outfield's stunning. The wicker block looks fantastic. The top oval looks phenomenal with the nets up there and all the wickets. It's, it's a pretty amazing place. We're very, very lucky here to be in Queensland and, and having these facilities right on our doorstep and, and now with North opening as well and as the stages roll out there, that, that's a fantastic redevelopment as well and such phenomenal training facilities available for the players. The idea being there that to upgrade North and then what usually happens here at Allen Border can happen at North while Allen Border's under refurbishment, right? Yeah, correct, yeah. So just take some of the load off here and, and move it to to North for a bit. And, and yeah. at the same time being in a climate where you can play nearly 12 months of the year here. Yeah, yeah, so we're very lucky with our weather and a lot of the other states, you, you look to them and, and they're all indoor training where we're, we've got the luxury of being here and, and outdoors, so can't fault our climate. If you've got nothing to do tomorrow, folks, come down and watch the cricket in these beautiful grounds. Even if it's hot, those stands stay pretty cool. Watch the... Uh, WBBL finals in one of the grandstands last year. It was hot, but it was cool there. It was yeah. good. Yeah, it does manage to get a nice little breeze yeah. through there as well, which is helpful. Harris again comes into Redmayne, full Whoa. toss. Lucky that uh, the fielder was found <laughs> on that one. <laughs> that would have been a horrible shot yeah. to get out on. <laughs> it, was, it was a very baseball third base hit. Yeah, like basically a slap bunt down the third That's base. A, line, uh, it? Called a no ball, so it gets the free hit. Short stop was too far out. So Wheeler gets the opportunity of the free hit can change the field because the bat has changed. Wheeler just trotting along there to run a ball. If they keep going like this we'll be uh, out of here early. It's it over the top of covers. That one will roll down the hill for four runs as oh. well. The free hit being punished. Really gets moving on that slope. single there. Got a 
say the wind's been really consistent today. Usually here it's really gusty in the afternoon, but it's just pretty consistent. Conica Minolta flag, 25 years they've been um, supporting the fire. great to be able to say that isn't it to have a partnership with Connick Minolta for 25 yeah. years they've been a phenomenal supporter of women's cricket in, in Queensland and well I felt quite old when I read that this week because I went I actually went to the first it was a breakfast I think here when they announced Connick and Minolta had come on as a sponsor of the fire team <laughs> yeah and I went is that 25 it can't be 25 years surely <laughs> yeah they did it when it wasn't uh, when it wasn't trendy so good for them. Hey, who says it wasn't trendy? <laughs> that was smart. Well, I thought it was trendy. It, it was a very uh, smart move by them and created That's the right. Get in early. Yeah. And again, quite strategic for Queensland cricket at the time to, uh, to secure their support and obviously a sign of of great work that Queensland Cricket's done to keep the sponsorship engaged and to make it worthwhile for Conica Minolta. They've been the sponsor so long we need a new flag. Getting a bit ratty around the edges there. If you're listening from Conica Minolta. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not theirs, is it? I think that's a Brisbane Heat flag. Yeah. The Queensland, flag. Queensland, Queensland Cricket, cricket yeah. <laughs> Colson, the captain, comes on for her spell. Everybody needs a new flag. Colson bowling right arm round the wicket. Pace off. Come away with a quick little single to the uh, mid off, a wide mid off. the three fielders out now they're putting a fourth one out now for Wheeler out to uh, square leg so plenty of space for the batters Coulson comes back to over the wicket for the right hander Ooh. well bold just a nagging pace isn't it Good idea when you're the skipper and things aren't going going your way to bring yourself on. Gets that one through the covers for four runs. Again, not bad. Still getting them to uh, play slightly outside of their reach. Yeah, I don't think that was a bad ball. I think it was just well played and yeah. brought a forward and. Just had soft enough hands to, to manipulate into a gap. Gets that one off the pads this time. A big space down there behind square leg. And they'll come back for an easy two. Leg buys. I think Greta Mayne wanted the strike back. She was going to say no. Yes. Oh, I'm just happy <laughs> with the single. She wasn't real keen on that second. You've, you've had too many <laughs> balls in a row now. I want the strike back. <laughs> She hasn't had it for a while. Stone Colson going to come round the wicket to the right hander. Come away with a single. And retains the strike. That's very well done. Mm. She's like, all right, it's mine now. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it for six overs. That's what she wants. If she catches up, they'll be uh, pretty close to done. So. None for 93 off nine overs. And they look like it's getting a bit warm out there. These two batters.
bit tough from the, the Gold Coast girls, isn't it? Out there on the boundary, no one out there running a little drink on. Have a sneaky little drinks break. Ah. Yeah. Pretend they need to change gloves and run something out. <laughs> we know it's West were pretty good at that. Too, yeah, that very running good. Running Kirby though. short out. They were out there. <laughs> I think that was because they were trying to wait for the ball to come back from <laughs> the top over on top of the roof. So Maybe Gold Coast hasn't got anybody who runs as fast as oh, Kirby. I don't know. <laughs> they haven't hit it far enough. They need like a to really dispatch it to buy themselves some time while uh -huh. they go looking for another ball. But... Well, I think that one's still on the roof of the uh, offices. I haven't seen anyone go up to get that one off yet. But I think they sh someone should be running a, a little bit of a, a quick drink out to them. Keeping them rehydrated, it is certainly hot out there, so yeah. a little bit of a sip of water won't go astray. Wet the whistle, as yeah. I like to say. <laughs> not having a go from the other end. Certainly Valley's going to the uh, pace off the ball strategy at the moment. Plays it finally for a single. That backward gully. Not sure if that's going to get a wicket though. Maybe slow them down a little bit. Which might frustrate them and then they might get a wicket. That's a <laughs> well, they've been playing really risk free cricket. So they haven't really had to do anything to create the. to create opportunities to score. So it's been fairly free flowing for them, so they've they've got the bad ball that they've been able to dispatch, and and also they've done really well in keeping the singles going. So once again, another fully that they could just kind of whip for four. So until they be out, they can build the pressure to create to cause them to create something that's not quite there. Then I think they're going to struggle to take a wicket. Yeah, at the unless moment, unless there's a lapse of concentration. Yeah, at the moment the Gold Coast are on course for by the end of. Uh, this over, this tenth over, they'll uh, only need about four runs and over, so. Field it down there, won't get to it on the fall. Takes it on the bounce, just for a single. I don't think they'll be looking to drag this one out to the end. I think they'll go see how quickly they can knock it over. Yeah. And get the runs. Yeah. They need to be out there, it's hot out there, so the sooner they can get in, get in the ice bath, put some yeah, cold shower, that they'll be feeling a lot better themselves and and wrap it up and ready for tomorrow. Yep. Just taps it in the mid wicket for a single. Huh. Brings a. A uh, hundred came up the wall before, sorry. It's up to 101 without a loss of wicket. Another century partnership today. There you go. There's a drink. A little, little drink. <laughs> They've been doing a good job out there. It's hard to get good help, isn't it? <laughs> if I was them, what else do you have to do? A reward for good work. Yeah. Gee. Well, they're back enjoying the scones in the dressing room. Oh, maybe. Maybe that's what they're doing. And, and if that's the case, I forgive them. <laughs> <laughs> These scones have jam on them? Yeah, 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 jam. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. There was also cream. I'm not one for oh, no. cream on, ja on Devin scones. Devonshire teas. So. Oh. But speaking of Corka, Corka liked uh, She loved the scones. A right-minded, a right-minded person. She actually made some one game and brought them in for us. Oh, wow. Very polite, very kind. Multi-talented. Colson around the wicket to the uh, left-handed Redman, plays it straight to uh, cover point for no run. Protecting
action out at square leg and mid wicket on the boundary. Plus a deep mid on. That one's going to pick the gap. Save your legs. Tough field to bowl to there. She's got all the three just backward of point. Another, well, I guess it's more of a gully. Uh, then a backward of point and then someone just in front of point so that's probably not the right line to bowl if that's where she's looking to have them hitting because there's just simply no protection out there. Goes down the ground, no one down there. The fielder though will get to it, it's more a seven iron. Yeah, that really Pitched and landed. Really plugged there, wasn't it? Hit the ground. Moving everybody. <laughs> Colson around the wicket again to the right hand of Wheeler for the sharp single but not there good fielding there really attacked that one cut them off Lucy Burke that might have been a bit close I don't want Redmayne hurting herself. <laughs> Throws up the misfield by the bowler, gets him a single. <laughs> this last couple from Wheeler there, <laughs> doing the best to get Redmayne not run out there. Twenty-seven <laughs> to Wheeler. 70 to Redmayne. Redmayne with 12 fours and two sixes in her 74 boundaries. The young Wheeler in her 26. She's starting to look a bit gassed there, Redmayne. Might have been that last dive didn't do her any favours. We're going to see Georgia Presswich come back in while her third over. Might be that big bruise that's probably developing on her upper chest, not doing her any favours either from when she got hit when she was keeping. We'll let her face first ball, the third over of Presswich. Takes it off the pad. I guess this is kind of all they've got left, left to try is um, bringing their opening bowler back, letting her have a crack. Yeah, look, I think they have to. Yeah. You've got to bring back your strike bowler to, to see if you can get a breakthrough. This game's gone away from, from Valley, so unless they get a breakthrough here, um, it, it's pretty much game over for them. So it's a good move. That They seem pretty... It's always hard when you're out in the field, but they seem a little bit flat, so they need something just to energise them, whether that's a good save or... Something just to get the girls up and going just a little bit. Crestwood <laughs> wide down the leg side. Prestwich trying for a bit of extra extra there, maybe. Straight a little bit. down to the uh, third man for a single. Thirty 
one runs required. Eight overs to do it in. Plays oh, it wide at the wicketkeeper. <laughs> the roll third man will come round, just gets it inside the rope. An easy two for Wheeler. Gets Did itself up to 29. Is there a glove on that? Did the keeper get a... We'll have a look on the replay. I thought it was just wide. Just wide. In in the vicinity, yeah. I, don't th I think she missed it, but could have nearly got a glove to it. Just half a frame behind it, I think. Wheeler off the pads out through mid wicket, just for a single. But it's been pretty chanceless innings by these two. Yeah, they have. They've been batting really, really well and, and a good partnership. And it's particularly difficult when you're not getting much of the strike, so they've done well. George has obviously monopolised it early on, but just balanced it out a little bit and another wide call by the umpire, second one in the over. Mm -hmm. We've seen some very different innings today, and, and this one's different again from from what we've seen, obviously, in the first two games, where it was a, a little bit more full gas, and then even in the first innings today, it, it's kind of, it's, it's a lovely cricket shot. It certainly was. Beautiful. Certainly going to make for an interesting final tomorrow. I was just going to ask, you guys have been here for both these games, so I think we can safely presume that it's going to be... Gold Coast and West, so what do you reckon that'll look like? What kind of a cricket game will that be? Oh, I, I think it will be um, it will be a closer encounter than what we've seen in this second game here and, and a very different game, I think, to what we saw in the first game. I think the bowling attack of Gold Coast is a lot better than um, what Sangay presented today, so it'll be a bit tougher for the the West batters to, to get up and going like they did. Uh, I feel West bowled very well today, so they're going to be a different attack again to, to what we've seen today out here for Valleys um, bowling to these girls. And uh, we obviously haven't seen too too much of the, the Gold Coast batting lineup. We've just seen these two, so a bit, a bit diff difficult to get a, a read. I think it's going to be a good game. D to me, it just rests on um, no pressure on, on Grace, but how she gets going and what kind of runs she can score. I think she's she's key to their batting lineup. Um, probably a little bit more depth in the Gold Coast one from from what I can see just on on a page of piece of paper. But uh, I think it's going to be good if if West bowl like they did today. I think they're going to put these girls under pressure, and it'll just be how quickly they can score and how many runs they can get. Yep, it's going to be something to see, all right. I think it'll start around 2.15 as well. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow afternoon, get yourself around here. Shoulder high, full toss, called a no ball. Wheeler gets the single as well. Redmayne gets the opportunity for the free hit. They've just been really patient, haven't they, Wheeler and Redmayne? Yeah, they've been super patient, just play what's on. So I think part of their, their innings is they haven't had to force anything. So until you can build that pressure and actually create an opportunity, they haven't had to do anything that's out of their kind of comfort zone which is makes batting look very very easy for them a short fielder down there it'll bounce just in front for a single
still moves up to 125. Maddox giving it plenty of loop. Toss drives it out through the covers. Save your legs, ladies. That's four runs all the way. Finishes Maddox's second over. None for 24 she has off her two overs. None for 129 off the 13th over. George Redbang ticking along here now at 80 off 44. Still no drinks. <laughs> no, just tough, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard to get good help. <laughs> They're down on their knees, oh, begging for it. You'd just be saying, all right, girls, you just sit there in the dressing room, yeah. nice and cool. Don't worry about us. We're out here. <laughs> oh, I'd be on to it. I'd be ripping into them at the after the, after the game. and At least they can get them a Gatorade or something, yeah. you would think. Not Dr. Redmayne, sure. she can pull, it, pull rank on them. Oh. At this rate, she'll have to get a little IV drip out and have to <laughs> hydrate herself because she can't get a glass of water. And Rain pulls that one behind square just for a single. It is interesting watching Wheeler because she's sort of wandering around a bit. The umpire just actually had to pull her back towards the stumps. She was sort of wandering off at the non-striker's end. Yeah, they're too busy having a little gas bag. Gas bagging on the, the sidelines, thinking how good is this? <laughs> Everyone's head down when the girls are slumped in the middle of the pitch. At That's the right. <laughs> 11 well, runs left for a victory. Carlson just moving her field around a little bit. I think both these batters just want the game over. They're running out of energy, I think. Yes. <laughs> Some of them are a bit limp in their shots now. Down gets it past that short mid on. Down to the deep mid off for a single. I bet they're hoping just for two little fullies. Rock back and quick get over to that. That's right, they go. The tree. Four, and a, four and a six will finish it off. Yep. I need ten runs now. Be like two hits Rolton, what they used to call Karen Rolton. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Goes high, there's a fielder down oh. there. She's coming in under and takes the catch. And Georgia Redmayne's innings of 81 comes to an end with victory in sight. Oh, you can't fault her for playing that shot. I think it's it was out of play. Just didn't get enough of a piece of it, but fantastic innings. Very, very classy. Her 81 coming up off 46 deliveries with 14 fours and two sixes. Good work done by the doctor today. Yep. And getting a nice bit of applause from a very appreciative crowd. As we see the Gold Coast captain Carly Fuller now come out. <laughs> said something that amused Redmayne, which is probably like, well, what's this all about? <laughs> <laughs> so we've still got 10 to get. Colson picks up the first wicket for the Valley side. One for 14, halfway through her third over. Batters cross, so Wheeler will be on strike. Oh, 
<laughs> Full of being very clear there. End of the 14th over. 14 overs down one for 131. Still those 10 runs needed for victory. Just an update in the cricket. Australia needing 70 runs to win, none for 20. Or chasing 90, none for 20. But their innings underway. Day three of that match. Could well, could, could be over by tea time tonight. Maddox keeps up. Comes in for her third over. She loves that shot, doesn't yeah, she? I was just gonna say it must be her must be her favourite. It's the only one she's got energy for. Comes down the wicket, beats the bowler. Fielder's down there. themselves close to this victory not finding those two quick boundaries that they were hoping to to uh, end it quickly it's still a really defensive field here by valleys I'm not sure why they'd still be having these drives back neither of these players have gone well certainly not the incoming batter but Neither one's gone over the top long. Bring him up, put the pressure on and, and try and create. It's not going to win you the game, but try and create a pressure and, and jag a wicket and a couple just to cramp him for the last few runs. Yeah, you just make them earn them. Yeah, it's, it's just a little bit too easy when they can just knock it straight down the ground for a single when a, a new batter's coming in and, and there's just no pressure on them. One for 134, 15 overs down. Just the seven runs needed. And Lexi Muller coming back on to bowl. What they should be doing is bringing that extra cover up. You don't need a sweeper back there, bring some pressure on. Bring him up, bring your point up. Don't have your drives back. It's just really negative defensive playing when y you're not winning a game here. <laughs> yeah. it, it's bring them up, create pressure on the batter and force them to go through. And Here's somebody coming up, up now off the fence. There you go. But even then having your two players back there, unless she's bowling short and that's an attacking option as a catch around the field, I'm not sure why they're back. Wheeler on strike. 
on 37. Mala. Just nudges that one into that huge gap there. They'll come back for two. Maybe that'll teach them to keep the field up. No, we're still going no. back. No. Still going back. <laughs> Bring them up. Maybe we have to <laughs> see if we yell it loud enough and try and manipulate the field. <laughs> I can open the window here. Uh, <laughs> bring him up. <laughs> Makes no sense. Muldoon again. Well, I'd place it just out into there. Into the short mid wicket would have stopped that for a single. It's very unusual. Target now, just three runs for victory. Still got fielders back, do we? Yep. Yep. I brought the mid wicket <laughs> in. It's a wide. Two runs now needed. Creeping up to it. Scores are now tied. <laughs> now they bring the field in. Pulls that there round for four boundary, gets the result and the victory. <laughs> four runs brings him up to one for 140. Victory coming up on the second last ball of the 16th over for the Gold Coast people. Have come away second place has beaten third place in the second semi final of the afternoon's Catherine Raymond Shield matches. Valleys after having won the toss and batting first, setting a target of 141 and the 16th over. Gold Coast side has prevailed for the loss of just the one wicket. You want to take us through the uh, summary of the uh, table there, Carol? Yep, so uh, Tara Wheeler and Georgia Redmayne opened and uh, Wheeler ended up with 44 off of 45. Redmayne had uh, 81 of 46, caught not bold Colson and Carly Fuller finished it all out with four off of five. For the bowlers, Prestwich bowled three overs, none for 32. Lexi Muller, none for 20 off 1.5. One Maddox, tw none for 27 off of 2.5. Charlie Knott bowled three, 29 runs. Um, Harris bowled two, none for 18. And Christina Colson bowled um, three overs, one for 14. Should have bowled yourself more, Skipper, maybe, or sooner. Um, yeah, so that's it for Val uh, Valley's had a pretty hard day at the office today after not posting quite enough. Kirsten, we've sat through two matches today to set up for an epic grand final tomorrow between the Western Suburbs and Gold Coast. What, how do you see today's matches setting up for tomorrow's final in the afternoon? Yeah, look, two very different performances, but I think the, the winners of both will um, be pretty confident in, in their performances today. I think um, my gut tells me that perhaps West will go in as slide favourites, obviously finish top in the ladder is, is helpful, um, but I just think they'll have the batting power to, to break apart um, the Gold Coast attack a little bit. In saying that, they were incredibly strong and Gold Coast were solid today and, and did what they need to to secure a win, and I think they were very composed in in that chase and, and composed down the field as well. So it's going to be an interesting game um, and hopefully there's a few runs out there and, and it makes for, for good entertainment. Well, if the wickets and the outfield is anything like what we've seen today and looking at the forecast, uh, not much chance of any overnight rain, so we're not going to see any change to the field. I think we're going to be in for a, a fascinating final in the afternoon between the um, uh, Western Suburbs girls and the 
Gold Coast girls in that final. Kirsten Pike, thanks so much for your time today. Really appreciate catching up and, and your insights into the match Thank across you. both of them. And Carol Weichel, thanks so much for your help through this second game. It's a beautiful, been a beautiful afternoon. It certainly has been fascinating cricket all day across it, entertaining and, and two very different matches, setting ourselves up for an epic final tomorrow afternoon in this Catherine Raymond T20 Shield final. Thanks so much for your company. It's Billy Deem signing off. Have yourself a fantastic Saturday evening.